The Wild West has long been a subject of adventure fiction, beginning with the historical novels documenting the American Civil War from writers like James Fenimore Cooper, to the western films of the 1950s, 60s and 70s, to video games like Red Dead Redemption, even inspiring the conventions of stories set in other worlds and times. Imagery of cowboys and Indians has shaped American culture, for better or worse, but it's had a far larger impact even than that. Tales of the American frontier, of a successful expansion into a foreign land, have spread far beyond where they came from, morphing and shooting off into their own mythology. For over 200 years, Germany has entertained itself with these stories of the great unknown, more than any other non-English speaking nation. The strange fascination with the Wild West and the Native Americans in particular, a phenomenon named Indian Enthusiasm by German Native American scholar Harmut Lutz, has produced its own books, films and traditions. It's also, arguably, given rise to one of the most bloodthirsty and monstrous rulers history has ever known. Historically, Germany has no real ties with the campaign of expansion and colonisation undertaken by the United States. While the British and French were responsible for the inception of the new nation, Germany had focused on expanding into southern Africa and the Far East, attempts that were relatively unsuccessful compared to its European neighbours, despite the horrendous slaughtering of the native population they resulted in. For the Germans, the endeavours of the white Americans represented discovery, and what their attempts at expansion could have been. It's also believed that Germany's history as a land of separate peoples, cultures and languages has drawn them to feel a connection with the tribal natives, sharing common values such as stoicism and a love of nature. As English fiction describing this new frontier began to be published, there was a growing demand for stories like those in Germany. This gap in the German market was soon filled by Karl May, author of over 40 books of the Western genre. He's best known for his Vinatu series, following the adventures of the titular Indiana, an Apache chieftain and heroic adventurer who, along with his German blood brother Old Shatterhand, wanders the American West righting wrongs and fighting bandits. Since his introduction in the novel Old Firehand in 1874, Vinatu has become an integral part of German culture and iconography, even to the point of parody. Despite this positive presentation of an American native, the stories are told from the perspective of the white German Old Shatterhand. Mai claimed to be Old Shatterhand himself, with his stories being faithful accounts of his own adventures in the West. He was seen dressed in full Yankee garb, posing with the real rifle used by his fictional alter ego, inspiring the imaginations of generations of German children and adults alike. But this was all, frankly, bollocks. Mai was not Old Shatterhand, there was no Vinatu. He had, in fact, never been to America. It was only a few years before his death in 1912 that he made a trip across the Atlantic for the first time, and even then, he journeyed no further west than Buffalo, New York, never visiting the sites where he claimed his experiences took place. His famous hunting rifle, said to have been won in battle against a native, was actually manufactured in Dresden. For years, Mai had created a legendary status for himself, but towards the end of his career, this illusion was shattered, and his true history was revealed. In his youth, he'd spent a total of eight years in prison for numerous petty crimes, drifting from town to town, taking on various jobs, impersonating government officials, and eventually settling on a career as a writer to pay the bills. Inspired by authors like Fenimore Cooper, as well as German writers such as Heinrich Baldwin Mühlhausen and Frederick Gerstacker, who had produced books based on their own expeditions to the West, Mai created his own completely fictional stories set in a fantasy version of the Wild West, developing a faux American dialect and naming convention that he claimed to be authentic. From his uninformed outsider perspective, Mai's stories imposed Germanic Christian values onto the tribesmen of the West, with Old Shatterhand functioning as an archetypal white saviour, using his knowledge of German civilization to guide the natives, who are fetishized and patronized in their characterization. Accurate or not, Mai's depiction of the West became the predominant idea of America for many Germans, and earned him a considerable fortune. Over the course of writing the Vinatu series, 
Mai had seemingly developed a genuine interest in and affinity for the Native Americans as he imagined them. In a lecture given just a few days before his death in 1912 in Vienna, he called for the Rassenverbrüderung, race fraternisation or brotherhood between the German and Native American peoples, stating their exceptional courage will unite them, and in the future, a race whose soul is German Indian will take the place of the white Yankee and seize control over the West. His ideas about a new physically and spiritually gifted super race captured the imagination of one particular member of the audience, a 22-year-old labourer and art school reject, Adolf Hitler. Wenn ich eine Frau hätte, wäre sie dann eine Squaw? Heißt mein Blutsbruder Old Shatterhand? Hat Karl May mitgeschrieben. Was denn? Ich bin Winnetou. Häuptling der Apache. Hitler had been a fanatic of Mai's work from a young age, like many Germans, devouring his books during lessons, staging battle reenactments in the playground, and even bringing in homemade weapons inspired by those of Old Shatterhand in Vinatu. But his obsession, as his colleague Joseph Goebbels called it, with these adventure books didn't end at school. As Chancellor of Germany, his private collection of over 16,000 books contained a complete set of Mai's writings and he was said to always have a Vinatu book nearby to give him comfort. The fantastic image of the West presented in Mai's books shaped Hitler's idea not only of the warrior hero, the noble spirit of which was said by Albert Speer to have been inspired by Vinatu himself, but also his idea of the United States as a whole. Reportedly, Hitler once said, I owe to Karl May my first notions of geography and the fact that he opened my eyes on the world. Western fiction was approved of and promoted in Nazi Germany. In 1937, the Karl May Museum in Saxony was renovated to enable swathes of Hitler youth members to visit, and in 1938, the first Karl May festival took place, beginning a long-running tradition of open-air theatrical productions based on the Vinatu series. Because of the pre-established interest in Native American culture, the Nazis could recontextualize and manipulate its imagery to suit their own agenda. The idea of the tribe was used to emphasize the importance of unity within the fascist system, obeying the chieftain as one would the Führer. In order to further link the German and Native American cultures together, a rumor was spread that centuries ago, the two populations were one, before the latter group split off to settle in America. Swastikas, already a prominent symbol in multiple world religions, were spotted in Native American tapestry and claimed as further proof that their culture was identical to the Aryans. Strangest of all, the government in Berlin authorised the citizenship of someone with German and Sioux American heritage in 1938, even granting them Aryan status, despite this strain of Native American blood. Ultimately, Hitler's ideas of the West are confused twisted to meet his own psychopathic motives. While on the one hand displaying a fascination with Mai's image of Native American culture, he also empathised with the real white colonisers. As Native American professor of law Robert J. Miller notes, Hitler employed Heinrich Krieger, an expert in American law, to advise him on the formulation of the Nuremberg Laws, using Krieger's knowledge of Native and African American persecution in the United States as a reference for the treatment of Jews from 1935 in Nazi Germany. One of the laws introduced prohibited the marriage of Jews and white Aryans. This had been preceded by legislature from 1664 in the state of Maryland, which banned interracial marriage involving African Americans. The Indian Removal Act had been signed by President Andrew Jackson in 1830 and forcefully relocated around 60,000 natives to federally owned land away from their ancestral homes. The law operated on the basis of classifying the natives as one racial group, despite their vastly different tribal histories, customs and cultures. By displacing the natives, either through relocation or slaughter in the so-called Indian Wars with the resisting tribes, the white Americans could move forward with their policy of manifest destiny, expanding into the western frontier with a god-given mandate. This policy is strikingly similar to the Nazis' idea of Lebensraum, seeking an expansion of the Third Reich to allow more space for its citizens, with the relocation of natives foreshadowing the Nazis' initial plan of moving Europe's Jews to Madagascar. 
Despite Mai's own pacifism, something he projects onto old Shatterhand, some of his books contain an average of just over one death per page, describing battles between the natives and whites in great tactical detail. Their violence is also believed to have influenced Hitler's thinking. In the campaign against the Russians, soldiers were encouraged to carry copies of Mai's books about fighting Indians, with Hitler reportedly referring to the Russians as redskins in meetings. The near extinction of the Native American population had proved immensely successful for the white Americans, with few repercussions. In a 1928 speech, Hitler acknowledged that the Americans had gunned down the millions of redskins to a few hundred thousand, and now keep the modest remnant under observation in a cage. According to Heinrich Himmler, the Nazis were hoping for a similar outcome with their final solution. Goebbels once said that the Führer does not change, he's the same now as when he was a boy. The fact that the books of Karl May were so constant for him throughout his life demonstrates this. While many critics have directly attacked May for having poisoned the hearts and souls of Germans with hypocritical morality, in sympathising with the natives but ultimately presenting the white old Shatterhand as superior, it's by no means certain to say that Karl May was responsible for the murderous ideas developed by some of his followers. What he created were myths, entertaining stories that tapped into a fascination with the alien and exciting land of the far west, whilst entertaining traditional Germanic values. However, by making the wild west something to be in awe of, these stories promoted simplified ideas of expansion and racial politics, which could persuade the culture into following Nazi ideology, while the real history provided the blueprints for an ethnocentric fascist state. But in just a few decades, the American frontier would be reinvented in Germany, and become the ammunition for a wholly different ideology.